Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Hope you're all doing well. I'm actually doing pretty great as last night I just became an uncle for the first time. So really excited about that. But today we're going to be talking about Battlefield 2042 again. Everyone's favorite first person shooter here in late 2021. And I'm not going to be just jumping on the hate train here and ranting and raving and screaming at the top of my lungs while hurling hilarious obscenities. Uh, at the developers of Battlefield 2042. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit more insightful information on the direction that this franchise is going and also the development uh, of the game initially and, you know, really why we got to where we are today. And I have to definitely credit Tom Henderson of Video Game Chronicles and IGN, a reputable member of the gaming press community. Uh, he published a video last night, uh, which I will link to down in the description below as as well as a pinned comment, possibly, uh, titled Battlefield 2042, What the Fuck Happened, Development Timeline, and the Future of Battlefield, where he goes through, it's a 30-minute video, it's a really good watch, it's very informative if you're curious how the Battlefield 2042 basically got to where it is, and it will probably give you some good insight onto where it's going uh, in the future, and it's probably not in the direction that most Battlefield fans uh, would want from the franchise. So we're going to get fired into all of that after a brief word from our sponsor. But first, today's video is brought to you by SuperCDK.com, where you can save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro for just $19.50. And then you can unlock the prestigious dark mode on Windows 10 and uh, take advantage of that. I couldn't live without it. And if you shoot over there right now, you could save 25% off, hit the buy now button, and then put in my code JP25 at checkout. I'll walk you guys through the process right now so you can see how much money we're saving and how to go ahead and install this on your Windows 10 PC. That brings our price down to $14.62, total of savings of almost $5 using that JP25 code, which will work for any software products over there. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on Submit Order and select your payment mode of choice, which for me personally is PayPal, and then I'll go ahead and complete the checkout by clicking on Pay Now. After completing the checkout, it'll bring you to your purchased order page and it will update in a matter of seconds or just go ahead and hit F5. Go ahead and do that one time. It came through literally immediately. I got the payment email that it had gone through and the delivery of the product exactly at the same time. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on view keys and codes and we'll get our code right here that we can go ahead and copy and paste in on Windows 10 by hitting the start button and type in the word activate. When you see that, activation settings or see if Windows is activated, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring up this right here and click on change your product key or unlock Windows 10 as I already have Windows 10. I obviously don't need to put in a new key, but just paste it in and then go ahead and click next and you are all done and set. For more information on supercdk.com as well as the coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. So the whole thing that kind of set off me wanting to do this video is there was actually a tweet on Friday from Tom Henderson. Uh, he's been commenting a lot about uh, Battlefield over the past couple of weeks and uh, dropping information and stuff like that uh, before a lot of things were announced. So been very reliable. And uh, like I said, he's a reputable member of the games press working with IGN, Video Game Chronicles, as well as other places. So he's got a lot of contacts within, you know, game development uh, studios, DICE, you know, for sure. As if you watch his video, there's lots of quotes uh, from past and current uh, DICE developers who are basically not even DICE anymore, which he even says in the videos that the studio shouldn't even be called DICE. The people that made the Battlefield franchise, uh, you know, what, for what we know the Battlefield franchise, are no longer there. It's a completely different studio, and it's a studio that has been remodeled in order to implement EA's vision of just making a gigantic cash grab, money-making uh, game, basically, like something like Apex Legends or Fortnite. And that's sort of where I wanted to initially make this video is because of his tweet the other day on Friday. It said, the next Battlefield title is scoped as a hero shooter of sorts. It's not a removal of specialists, but an enhancement of them. Battlefield 2042 has always been intended to be a stepping stone to a hero shooter with a battle royale. It was just executed poorly. And if you watch his full 30 minute video, he kind of takes you through all of this, how back in 2016, uh, when longtime uh, head, head of DICE, I believe he was the head of DICE, was Patrick Bach. Um, he's, you know, was always kind of like the face of the Battlefield franchise and like in previous years before, uh, you know, going into Battlefield 5 and 
and all that stuff. And he left the company as well as t dozens and dozens of other developers and uh, lead, lead designers on the Battlefield franchise walked away because they didn't like the direction that EA wanted to take it. Basically, they weren't giving them creative control anymore, and they wanted them to develop a live service, something like Apex Legends, which came out during the development of Battlefield 2042. And the direction of the game was constantly changing with knee-jerk reactions based on like, hey, look, Fortnite's really good, let's do let's do that. And then Warzone had their specialist in there and they said, "Oh, let's do that. We want to we want to we want to sell skins and spe and specialists to people so that we can capitalize on that popularity and make tons of money from it." And then Respawn had Apex Legends come out and that was massively successful as well. And basically EA just wants to get on that train. They want to release the next live service that will make them hundreds of millions and potentially even billions of dollars. And they see Battlefield as that cash cow because it has the built-in fan base and the brand recognition of Battlefield. But they want to take it in a direction that basically makes the game not anywhere even remotely close to what Battlefield has always been known to do. And it's basically abandoning the community that loves these games and just want it to, want it to get back to, to being that. And so over the last three to five years where EA has been trying to take Battlefield in this different direction, they've had a revolving door of sorts of developers and lead designers and stuff working at DICE on Battlefield 2042 and as well as other content. And they even have other studios being set up uh, actively right now to work on the Battlefield franchise and take it in the direction that EA wants it to go. So when they say they're going to work on this game in order for it to achieve its full potential, they're not talking about achieving the uh, potential of appeasing the hardcore Battlefield fans of the franchise of games past. They're talking about achieving that live service model so that they can make hundreds of millions of dollars. That's what they want to do, and that's what, where this franchise is going. Not only just 2042, but the games beyond it as well. And the only way, as Battlefield fans, that we can stop this from happening is to not play this pile of dog shit. We should not accept what they are trying to do to the Battlefield franchise. If we ever want to experience a new Battlefield game ever again, don't play Battlefield 2042. If you've already bought it, try to get a refund. If you have EA Play, don't play it. Make the servers die. Just That is the only way that they will actually listen to us and do anything that's going to change the game to get it back to what a Battlefield game should be and rather than just, you know, fix... They, they have no intention of going back and starting over and making it like a previous Battlefield game because that would basically be them admitting that they were wrong and that they, they did something incorrect in the first place. No, they're going to continue to patch the game and improve on the bugs so people can't complain about that stuff and then they'll start releasing the skins and the custom specialists and the battle passes and all of that. And mark my words, within a year or two, there will probably be a battle royale element introduced to this game, which is what Hazard Zone was supposed to be. It was supposed to be, and Tom Henderson talks about this, it was not initially intended to be a standalone battle royale type experience, and they ended up just implementing it into the game anyway as part of the full $60 or $70 package, whatever the game costs. And yeah, this is basically what we got. And Hazard Zone is terrible. No one wants to. I mean, ha wants to play Hazard Zone. The portal implementation was bad. Uh, we've gone over all of this before, but really, the main point of this is if you want to see this game, not this game, but the next Battlefield game, to actually be a Battlefield game, is to not play this. Don't play it. And anytime you can, if you see them, you know pushing this bullshit out about hero shooters and specialists and skins and all that stuff, people got to be on them. Otherwise, it's never going to change. Look at the change that happened with Battlefront 2 and the response to the loot boxes at launch. People stopped buying the game, they stopped playing the game, and they actually went back and addressed a lot of it and fixed it. And I hope they could do that with Battlefield 2042, but I'm not that hopeful, honestly. So that's all I've got to talk about here today with Battlefield 2042. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do another video on this game, honestly. I, I keep on trying, to, people keep on asking me, like, why, you know, why do you keep talking about it and why do you keep trying to play it? And it's because I do love the Battlefield franchise. I have a lot of really great memories and people that I've met and played Battlefield with. And I want that again because I feel like it's been years, probably since Battlefield 4, where I really felt like I got the Battlefield experience that I was hoping for. 
And I think a lot of people, like myself, were hoping that this game would be that, but it's apparent that they never had that intention to begin with. They never wanted this to be the next battle, the, like a, a, the game after Battlefield 4. They, no, they had no intention of ever getting to that point, so it's not a surprise that what we got at the end of the day was this slapped together piece of shit that was worked on by people that had barely any experience working with the Frostbite engine uh, and with the Battlefield franchise at all. They had almost no experience and then add in uh, issues where people were working from home during in, in 2020 because of COVID and all that stuff, which is understandable these things happen. But as Tom Henderson even mentioned in his, video, in his video, these people were working on the game and they didn't have the hardware to test it. There was an example of a guy who would work on something to maybe fix the game on PlayStation 5, but he didn't have a PlayStation 5 at home, so he'd literally have to send the fix to someone else in the studio that had a PS5 to work on it because not every single developer that worked there had all four consoles as well as a high-end gaming PC to work on uh, the games at home in a efficient manner. So it was just extremely inefficient, and they ended up just not really being able to do it, and they needed more time to get this game finished. And they did what they wanted to do at the end of the day, Electronic Arts, that being, is to get a big holiday release out before the end of the year, and this is the result of it. Battlefield 2042... This is the direction they're going, and I feel like with the next game, it's going to be even worse. Maybe they can get a smoother launch out of it, and it won't be as buggy, but the direction of the game at the end of the day is not going to be what old-school Battlefield fans want, and that is the, essentially what we're dealing with here, is a bare-bones uh, game that is has the remnants of what Battlefield used to be, but it's not really there. It's like, it feels, it's, it feels like something else trying to be Battlefield, but it doesn't actually get you there. And you'd be probably be better off trying out that uh, new World War III game, which actually looks more like Battlefield than Battlefield at this current point anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Hope you guys all have a fantastic day and I will catch you guys next time for another video.